good morning, everybody. Um, lovely to see so many people here. We may have a few more wandering in, but I think we'd better get going because we've got a lot to talk about this morning and we don't want to run too far behind time. Um, my name's Melissa Leach. I'm director of the Institute of Development Studies in Sussex. And as a researcher, I've worked on issues around environment and development for many years. And I'm currently involved as one of the advisors to the SRC's um, Nexus Network Plus, which is based in Sussex and run also with the Cambridge Programme for Sustainability Leadership um, and the University of East Anglia. So we in IDS2 have become very interested and involved in Nexus issues. Um, so I was delighted when Andrew asked me to come and chair this debate today and participate in it. Because I think um, as we move into uh, up to the post-2015 era and think about the upcoming COP and questions of climate change and what development is going to look like, um, it's pretty clear that um, achieving a better balance between the use of and access to natural resources and economic and social aspects of development is more critical than ever. We've got some big questions about long-term sustainability, um, which countries and places and people often have to, to manage against some of the real tensions of more immediate livelihood needs in contexts of um, rising incomes and immense poverty in some places, population growth, and other sorts of economic and political pressures. Um, balancing those aspects of development um, integrating the environmental with the economic and the social are really the key challenges for the sustainable development goals and at least we do now have a framework notionally coming together which is attempting to integrate those crucial aspects of development but I think the world and policy makers and people in governments and in NGOs are still grappling with how to make those things real on the ground and that's what we're going to be talking about today now, I think the nexus concept, this idea of the nexus between food and water and energy, um, has become and is becoming a very powerful way of thinking about the challenges and thinking about the needs to integrate these different crucial dimensions of the ways people use natural resources. Um, it's a concept that many governments have taken up. Certainly in the UK, we're seeing a lot of interest within government that researchers have become interested in, hence the ESRC funding this big Nexus Network Plus. Um, Future Earth, which is the big post-Rio new umbrella for drawing together all the global environmental change science um, that I'm pleased to be part of the science committee of, in fact, co-chairing it, has taken forward the Nexus concept as one of the core strategic research and policy challenges as we see it for this next era of interdisciplinary engaged science. But I think there are still some very big questions. First of all, about what nexuses on the ground really look like, what the concept is good for in terms of what it reveals and exposes, but also perhaps what it might hide, how we think about the challenges of integrating food and water and energy, um, but yet also the trade-offs and tensions that sometimes exist between these different dimensions of resource use and livelihoods. And so on the one hand, for policy, there are challenges of integration, but there are also challenges of thinking about and exposing tensions and trade-offs where they exist. And for getting to grips perhaps a bit more firmly with the issues of how different aspects of the nexus or different nexuses are prioritized and valued by different social groups, whether that's within communities or amongst different um, local and national and even international stakeholders and their various representatives. So I think there's a great deal still to nail and to think about in this area. And that's why um, it's particularly good that we've got a series of case studies here to help us think through these things. And I think that's what we, we need. So the meeting today is going to look in some very practical and policy relevant terms about at how certain low and middle income countries have been tackling the trade-offs and the challenges inherent within the nexus, balancing environment and development concerns, um, reflecting on the importance and the, the opportunities to integrate across sectors, but perhaps also revealing some of these tensions between dimensions of the nexus. What we've got today is four case studies, um, which have all emerged as part of ODI's development progress project, 
We're going to hear presentations this morning on two of them, the case studies from Brazil and from Burkina Faso. And then in the afternoon, as part of the roundtable discussion, the case studies from, um, from Vietnam and China will also come into the picture and reports are available. We're also going to hear from a representative of the Stockholm Environment Institute um, about the relationship between the Nexus and the SDGs. Um, just briefly, um, ODI's Development Progress Project is supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, it has a broader remit to explore and refine definitions of development progress, to think about new metrics, to think about new analytical tools. And the Nexus concept, I think, can come into that umbrella as a new analytical tool that, that can, be, can be brought to bear on some of these challenges. And, and the Development Progress Project is very much about producing compelling case studies. I think across the board there are about 28 being produced. And those we're thinking about today um, are those that have come out of the environment dimension of the various ways in which the project is thinking about, about well-being. Um, and in different ways, Burkina, Brazil, Vietnam and China will be looking at the relationships between environmental sustainability and economic and social progress. Two of the case studies, the Vietnam and the Brazil ones, look at different dimensions of sustainable energy. And two, the Burkina Faso and China ones, um, look at sustainability and agriculture. But in each of those, I think as we'll see, um, water is critical and we see interconnections and interdependencies and tensions between energy and food and water. The case studies haven't all been explicitly framed in terms of the Nexus concept, but I think um, separately and together, they will give us a lot of food for thought um, to help nail and reflect on this concept. And the speakers in presenting have been asked to draw out the Nexus elements. So I think we've got a fantastically interesting day, day ahead. Um, and I'm going to start by turning over to Andrew Scott, um, who I'm sure is known to almost everybody here. He's an ODI research fellow um, working in the Environment and Climate Change program. Prior to that, for many years, he was um, running policy at Practical Action. Um, and I think he brings an enormous amount of experience to these debates. And he's also one of the authors of the Vietnam case study. So I think Andrew's going to outline for us a little bit um, about the project and what we're hoping to do today. 